He said he's thirsty, his desire for water is, has sort of is the predominant thing that's dictating his behavior. And if we stop, we're just going to stop here, we're going to watch them from here. Because if I go around to the other side, then I'm not going to have any kind of an escape route if he does decide to get upset with us. That being said, Nelson, each and every single one of these animals has grown up from very, very young with the presence of safari vehicles. So they're all, we're fortunate in that they're all incredibly habituated to us. And whilst we certainly interact with them on some level, there's no way that we can claim that we don't have an impact on the animal, that they don't acknowledge us or see us. There's nothing out here that wants to hurt us or attack us. It's just a matter of reading their behavior and being as respectful as possible. Now, the elephant is the undisputed, especially a big bull elephant like the ones we've got in front of us, undisputed kings of our jungle. And it's important that we treat them as such. Natasha, you were wondering if the um, elephants, like, kind of like horses, can sense whether or not you are afraid. Yes, I'm absolutely certain that they do. Um, and particularly with, with bull elephants, it's not really a message that you want to send to them because the male elephants can be quite, quite keen on asserting their dominance at times. So you don't really want to, to provoke them in any way. Um, I feel that they, they read fear. I think most of the time it doesn't bother them. But it is an important aspect of, your, of the way in which you handle sightings. And sometimes we get bull elephants that are very curious and that want to come right up to the car and have, an, have a good sniff, maybe even at times touch the vehicle. And I, it's a personal preference. I never let them touch our vehicles. But it's very important in those situations to make sure that you maintain control. The worst thing that can ever happen in the bush is that somebody panics. And that's one of the reasons why I don't let elephants touch the vehicle, because I know Viam. I know that he has nerves of steel and he is absolutely knows what he's doing in the bush. But if you have a vehicle full of passengers, some of whom have never seen an elephant before, having an elephant right up close, speaking from experience, does bring home just how large they really are. And people's res you, can't, you can't predict people's responses. You can predict an elephant's behavior, but you cannot predict what the people on the vehicle are going to do. So I don't want the elephants learning that it's okay to touch the vehicles because it might not be my vehicle next time. It might be someone with a vehicle full of people who've never experienced an elephant before. And a scream at the wrong time or a sneeze is definitely going to have a negative impact. You guys can hear just how windy it is. We're downwind of the elephants at the moment and the wind is just howling across this open area. Ooh, it's actually a little bit unpleasant. I don't, I don't really like, I'm not a wind person. It unsettles me for some reason. And I know I'm not the only person that feels that way. Okay, now that they've moved off a little bit and they seem to be distracted by each other, we can sneak a little bit closer. Now we've got a group of males here at the moment. And a good morning to Tammy in New Zealand while we attempt to hide and shelter ourselves from this incredible howling wind. I'm trying to keep my cap on my head. You want to know if it's more common to find elephants in big groups or little groups. Depends on where you are, depends on the time of year. So yesterday we saw a herd or several herds all joined together. It was probably about 50 if not more elephants in that area. And that's relatively common where they're, they're sort of coming together around a, a water source, there's not all that much water at the moment in the Sabi Sands or in the Greater Kruger Park area. So the herds get a little bit larger, but then in Botswana or in Zambia you might see herds of 100, 200 elephants moving through an area. It's very, it's very area dependent, it's very seasonally dependent and rainfall dependent. Oh, having a lovely last, one last trunk full of water before they move off. And the breeding herds are, consist of females and their offspring and the occasional attendant male. But when you see bachelor herds like this, they will invariably be much smaller than your average breeding herd. So bull elephants come together for a little bit of company, maybe a bit of practice sparring, and then they move off on their own. 
So a, a bachelor herd of elephants is a very fluid thing. They come together and then move apart. And these guys are moving off. I've just got a full whiff 